John Glenn. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, it's a great privilege to be able to speak in this debate. Uh, I represent Salisbury, which is, I always think, uh, a constituency of two halves, half being a really suburban area and half being full of uh, rural communities. Uh, and the two work very closely together. So I would really uh, want to echo the uh, remarks of the previous speaker, who I think really did hit the nail on the head when he said it's really unhelpful for us to make too clear a distinction between the interests of, of rural and urban communities. Um, but what I do want to focus on are the challenges that are faced by rural businesses. Because it seems to me that uh, rural businesses in Salisbury and South Wiltshire are growing and are a vibrant and uh, wholly um, necessary part of uh, <coughs> the economy doing better uh, and provide a number of uh, jobs that are really welcomed by the local community. And one of the real challenges that they tell me is, is most significant to them, and as the, I see in the EFRA committee report, which uh, calls it the key barrier to growth for the rural economy, is broadband. Super fast broadband, which, as other speakers have said today, is no longer a luxury, but is a necessity for everyday life and certainly everyday business life. And I think that there have been significant challenges that have not yet been fully overcome when it comes to the flows of information. Whilst it's wholly welcome that there will be substantial investment to ensure that now 95% of households will have access to superfast broadband, there is a real sense of frustration within the most rural parts of my constituency about when this is going to happen, whether they will be included, and if they won't be included, what alternatives exist? And I would like to mention the Dun Valley Broadband Group, a well-organised and well-motivated group uh, around the, primarily the village of Pitton, who approached me over six months ago when they were unsure whether they would fall into the zone and which phase of rollout uh, uh, they would be included in. And we've had meetings with Wiltshire Council, who I have to say uh, have been excellent in trying to move things forward, pressing BT for more clarity and people have mentioned earlier the, the, the maps and the postcode checker which I do find sometimes quite inadequate in terms of really nailing specific <coughs> communities. We need to know, people don't want to know in general if there's going to be 90 odd percent coverage, they want to know specifically yeah, course, whether they can access yeah. super fast broadband and why. Absolutely, yeah. And if they're <coughs> not able to do so they want to take steps as a community to move forward with alternatives and this particular group have been working with a, a Giga Clear, a wholly commercial scheme and have been given the challenge to reach a certain threshold uh, but uh, as the report says that the biggest challenge facing smaller uh, companies is the ability to meet upfront costs. Um, but what I'm more concerned about too is the challenge for the poorer uh, households in those communities that fall outside of even the 95%, uh, what are they going to do if a well-motivated group reaches the threshold for an alternative provision which is outside the protection uh, of the regulator with respect to escalation in cost in subsequent years and they will have no alternative uh, but to sign up or to go along with uh, the alternative that the rest of the community have uh, en enabled to, to um, uh, get, get, get in place. But I, I, referring to um, the Honourable Lady for Thurston and Moulton's comments around let's start with the poorest communities and those that, or, or sorry, the, the, the ones that are at the slowest uh, end of uh, eligibility and, and actually working that out. I, I, I would just be a little bit cautious, and I'm not an expert on this, but with respect to the spidering out process, if, as I understand it, uh, BT work out um, from the logical hubs, uh, uh, logical stations and bases, if they then skewed a lot of that according to um, deviations of speed within those communities, they could potentially, I would have thought, lead to a massive escalation in cost, which could then undermine 
the, the end uh, result for the whole, the whole community as a whole. Um, but, but what I'm concerned about is that these information flows are improved so that communities can get organised and can actually find alternatives. Because it is really important that those who are outside the current intervention area can access a super fast service. Uh, but it mustn't be at the expense of those who could not afford to pay uh, an additional subsidy. If these smaller schemes are to be both commercially viable and accessible to the whole population, then we need to look at how the public subsidy is effectively overcomes these initial costs for small businesses <coughs> and for poorer rural householders. Um, the, the, the other thing that I want to mention is the, con the concern I have around the plans to extend to 95% superfast broadband to 2017. At the moment, my local authority are concerned uh, not to waste time planning for this when there's a lack of clarity over whether and when this money and will be delivered <coughs> and how it will be delivered. Wiltshire Council have invested considerable time and money in an outstanding programme, but they want clarity over what's going to happen. They're keen to just extend their existing contract arrangements with BT so they can uh, bring more households into the remit of the rollout. Uh, and they don't want to spend hour, uh, hours of time at council level uh, and lots of resources uh, tendering, spending months jumping through the state, state aid issues and all of that. Um, we need to make sure there's real clarity that doesn't get lost in some of the conversations um, that seem to go quiet when we get within 12 months of a general election. And be absolutely clear what local authorities can expect out to 2017 so rural communities in, in my part of uh, Wiltshire uh, know what's going to happen. There's no doubt that uh, local authorities and local villages are working hard to secure superfast broadband. It will be the measure uh, of the government's success or not, I think, going into the next election. Because for small businesses, they will not be able to function reliably. <coughs> if you need to transfer lots of data to clients abroad or in London, you can't have any doubt over the quality of the provision that you have in your rural business. So I welcome the steps that have been taken so far. But I would uh, urge the government, and I hope the Minister, in his response, can speak to the point about what resources will be available going forward, uh, can speak to improved uh, information flows, can address the point that uh, my honourable friend made earlier about this point around commercial uh, uh, confidences and sensitivities, which seems to me prevent a good deal of progress being made in the most rural areas. <coughs> and that we can actually ensure that this happens because rural businesses, it is all that they want to talk to me about and I'm very anxious that we should deliver.